BYU radio football analyst, former BYU quarterback, man that led the Cougars to 10 wins in his final season. Riley Nelson is with us over Zoom. Riley, welcome back to the program. Happy Friday, albeit I don't know how happy you are on this Friday because I'm imagining that your little bum this series is going away. How, would, how do you feel about Utah State and BYU not being played for the foreseeable future? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. It was a game, look, I, if you were to ask 12-year-old Riley or maybe 14-year-old Riley that was diehard, you know, bleeding Aggie blue and just watched his dear Aggies get crushed year after year after year, I'd probably say, hey, it's probably good for us to take a break. Let us catch our breath, you know, try and develop the program and, and come back when we can make it a little bit more competitive. But over the last decade, it's been a very competitive and back and forth BYU still has the edge in it, but it's it's been back and forth. There's been some very memorable games, although not great memories for, for BYU with the string of quarterback injuries in that game and stuff. But it, it's always, uh, over the last decade, it's been a game that's provided a lot of quality entertainment, not just for both schools' fan bases, but for the state overall. But that said, uh, all good things must come to an end, and everyone's... Look, if I'm on either side of this argument, obviously on BYU, I'm excited. We're finally back into a conference at, uh, and a P5 conference, which was kind of the goal of heading into independence, into independence in the first place. And then Utah State's coming off a conference championship, a double-digit win season, you know, and uh, and having a ton of success in their own right. So I think uh, for both programs, I, while it's sad for us as fan base to not have that kind of brotherhood rivalry. I think as far as the programs, they'll continue on their independent paths um, to what I think are bigger and better things. Utah and Utah State played forever. I think they played 25 more times than BYU and Utah State, and they're meeting for the 91st time uh, in September. But after Utah went to the Pac-12, there were a couple of dates that lingered, but then came uh, 2015, and that was it. And, uh, and they're not on the schedule, and there doesn't appear to be any interest at all from Utah to go back and rekindle with Utah State. And they don't have to. But it's a blueprint of where BYU's going now into the P5, into the Big 12. And so we wonder if uh, there will ever be a time when BYU goes back to playing Utah State. What do you think about the future beyond 2026? I sure hope that they make it a priority, just as they said in the statement that was released yesterday. I think in the course of 10 years, if they can perhaps get three games in, I'm okay with that cadence. And I think it allows both sides. Listen, if we were, I think in the South, fan bases, they don't look forward to, I'm thinking about the Florida schools, right? You got Miami, Florida State, and Florida. Obviously, Florida State and Miami are both in the ACC, but you've got Florida. And it seems like those those three teams are content to use that non-conference game to play each other every year uh, and, and eat up opportunities to go elsewhere. But that's because the South School, you know, Alabama, I remember a few years ago, they didn't travel more than two hours away from Tuscaloosa throughout the whole, throughout the entire regular season. That's just kind of a different brand of football. Here in Utah, I feel like the fan bases look forward to opportunities to go across the country, to play in some of these storied stadiums, go back to the uh, Midwest and play against Big Ten schools, play in a marquee stadium like the Cougars get to go play Oregon and Autzen Stadium, which they haven't played there many times over their history. That's something that both, and speaking for both fan bases, I know it's something Utah State definitely looks forward to. The fans really gear up, they travel well, and they love those experiences of going across the country. And if you lock down that, you know, those non-conference games are precious. And if you lock down one, that's only kind of a, a, a 90 minute or a two hour travel, a two hour journey. It's one that everybody's accustomed to. Uh, the fan bases um, might become a little bored to that. So I guess what I'm saying is while other schools seem to make it work, their fan bases have long accepted it. I truly think that uh, if you were to take away those opportunities for greater travel and greater exposure tra across the country for both BYU and Utah State, I do feel like the fan bases would feel something was taken away. So um, coming back to my original statement, if they can somehow get three games in the, over the course of 10 years, uh, I think that's great. But any less than that, um, at least for me personally, I'd feel uh, would be too little. Former BYU quarterback Riley Nelson on BYU Sports Nation. He is the current BYU football radio analyst. I know you're well aware of next year's schedule. And as we look ahead at Tennessee and Provo and now Southern Utah and Provo combined with a road game at Arkansas, 
it makes sense to me why BYU dropped Utah State next year. I don't like it, but it makes sense. The following years, I think that's where Aggie fans are kind of like, hey, why can't there be room for us in 2024 and 2025? Like, why have to push it out beyond 2026? So, Riley, what would you say to Utah State fans about why this makes sense for BYU? Because I it's not personal. If anything, it should be a compliment because I'm sure Tom's like, Utah State's too good. You know, we, we, we need a break of sorts. What would you say to Utah State fans that still just can't wrap their heads around this? I'd say give uh, Tom, whether he's, you know, I, I'm assuming he's going to be here over the long run, but they, BYU has a backlog. Our contract or our scheduling agreement with Utah State is not the only one. Keep in mind, this BYU uh, into the Big 12 thing was happened somewhat fast and furious, right? There was an opportunity there, and it was seized by BYU, and everything works out to land them in the conference. But that didn't automatically or immediately erase all of the scheduling agreements and all of the plans that had been in place for independence over, you know, to 2025, 2026, and beyond. We have we had games scheduled uh, under the framework of independence well beyond those times. And, and Tom still is having to kind of do, figure out where do we place those games while now dealing with a conference schedule. So I'd say within probably two to three years uh, in the big, most of that will be sorted out. And then uh, BYU's athletic department and Utah State's athletic department will have a perhaps a more predictable or, or a future in which they can plan things out over the long term and get a little bit more regular cadence. But essentially, we're in a transitionary state. Um, it's going to take a couple of years to work through it. So if Utah State fans could just be patient with BYU's athletic department, I believe Tom and and also the other leadership of the university athletic department when they say that they, this is a very important game to them, a very important matchup and rivalry, and that it will be preserved. Um, it's just treading into these new waters. There's going to be an adjustment period. Speaking of opportunity, uh, the reason you're on this show and the reason you're the BYU TV football analyst and the reason Cougar Nation knows who you are has everything to do with this Utah State rivalry. You, you transferred from Utah State after your mission. You're the backup quarterback, and then Utah State comes to Provo. Cougars get behind. You come onto the field. You lead this dramatic comeback, a tipped ball into the end zone to Matthews for a touchdown to beat the Aggies. And then it's your job moving forward. So you are invested deeply in this Utah State BYU rivalry in a number of ways. But but just think about where you are this morning from that game and what came after it. Exactly, Dave, and that's why I don't want to see this rivalry go away. Uh, I I think think about on the other end for for Utah State, Nick Vigil, who was a guy that uh, out of Fremont High School that wanted to play for BYU ends up signing with ends up not getting the scholarship offer at least and who knows you, you always get those recruiting stories anyway ends up at Utah State gets a chance I don't know if you guys remember in 20 the game when Taysom got hurt I believe it was 2014 um, when he hurt his leg and Nick Vigil was playing both ways he had an interception he had like 10 tackles and he also had two TDs because they put him in at running back and you know he made his name and in the he was able to kind of extend his legacy in the in the state football lore by because of this rivalry rivalry game and there have been countless others and so um not just the fact that i i was from logan and happened to play at byu and, and play at both those schools it it provides an opportunity for college football players who grew up grew up in this state to play against other players who grew up playing in this state or at least at a greater clip at a greater proportion especially as you look at the utah byu rivalry and utah continues to seemingly recruit less and less in-state players and more and more out-of-state players utah state and byu which byu doesn't look like they're deviating anywhere from you know rule number one of recruiting which is win your home state is they continue to sign the best players out of utah and utah state continues to try and get you know as much talent as they can out of, out of their own home state it, there's a unique dynamic to that rivalry there and then for kids like me who grew up playing in that play watching that game to then get the opportunity to play in it and have a meaningful impact and kind of put your stamp on, on that page of history um in the state uh, for the game of football in the state of utah is something that cannot be considered lightly and, and I would hope is would not be thrown away just because of conference affiliation changes. Riley Nelson is with us <clears throat> on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, Riley, let's push it ahead to 2022 and this current BYU football team from one quarterback to another. As you look at Jaron Hall, 
I'm seeing everything from a projected first to maybe third round draft pick in 2023, but um, uh, there's still question about his health. What do you expect from Jaron Hall uh, in the 2022 season as BYU navigates their final year of independence? I don't need to say this to Jaron because I know his head is in the absolute right place. So I'll just say this to the fan base. Who was the number one ranked quarterback going into this last year's draft? Spencer Rattler out of Oklahoma, right? And he wasn't even draft eligible. So anyway, this is a guy who ends up losing his job, having to transfer. He's not even sure if he secured the job at his new place in South Carolina. So like throw all the mock drafts, throw all the predictions out the window. And I know that that's what Jaron, I know that's where his mindset is at. He is one, one step at a time, one game at a time, one practice at a time. He's got such, and you can see it in the way he plays. He's got such a calm, poised, and just like intentional demeanor. I have no wor- I have no worry that he's focused on the task at hand, which is being the absolute best quarterback. And, and right now in the summer, preparing to be his best heading into week one in all aspects, not just from a skill development, from a mental aspect of the game, but that also means from recovering from injury and working on preparing his body for injury prevention and to be more durable than he has been in the last couple of years. So I guess my one petition to fans is let's not give any ammunition for uh, outside distractions for Jaron or his teammates by buying into all of that, uh, all of that prediction stuff. Now, as far as the task at hand, at hand for him. Yeah. I mean, He's been incredibly productive. He is the unquestioned leader of this football team. The the last, and he's proven he can do it all. He can make an impact on the game with his legs. He can win a game through the air. The the last bit for him is to be able to somehow, tr- and, and listen, this is a fleeting thing. Even, uh, and I don't know that I'm the one to really be speaking on it because I struggle with injuries uh, throughout my own career too, but hopefully he can find a way to bulletproof himself against uh against injuries because to quote a former byu great nfl hall of famer the best piece of advice i ever got from steve young is the best ability is availability right being out there week in week out for your teammates if jaron can lay that last piece of the puzzle look out because this byu offense is going to be scary good man it feels like as simple as just him staying healthy and we're staring at potentially another double-digit win season. Riley, great stuff. We appreciate your insight into the rivalry uh, and your analysis of Jaron Hall. Let's hang out again soon. Anytime, fellas. Thanks for having me on.